Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the presentation on an experimental validation of an ellipsoidal state estimation procedure for a magnetic levitation system, which I co-authored together with my colleagues Jonas Suedon, Simon Roux, and Luc Jolin, de l'École Nationale Supérieure des Techniques Avancées à Brest in France. During this presentation, we will firstly deal with uncertainty representations for dynamic system models, especially with a representation that considers bounded error representations. Thereafter, we'll deal with experimental parameter identification using this bounded error representation for a magnetic levitation system. Especially, we'll derive an ellipsoidal approach that allows us to perform predictor corrector state estimation procedures. And this corresponding procedure will then finally be compared with an uncentered Kalman filter without and with estimation of disturbance forces for the benchmark scenario in this consideration. Finally, we'll come to conclusions and an outlook on future work. The benchmark scenario that we will consider during this presentation is a magnetic levitation system manufactured by the company Inteco and it especially consists of an electric magnet here on top, which allows us to position a ferromagnetic sphere within the field of the electromagnet with an optical position sensor that allows us to determine the distance between the sphere and the magnet. Yes, and finally, we're representing the corresponding dynamical system model as a three-state system, depending on the position x1, the velocity x2, and the electric current x3. The corresponding nonlinearities in this system model depend especially on the electric current here. We have the quadratic nonlinearity of the current in the magnetic force characteristic, as well as a significant position dependency, both in the semi empirical model for the magnetic actuator force, as well as also for the position dependent time constant of the current controller. The corresponding parameters that are included in the system model are denoted here by capital F, E, and P1 and 2, as well as also the corresponding parameters that are included in the time constant for the current control. This system model uh, represents the dynamics, the nonlinear dynamics of the system model in a semi empirical way and has been used, for example, in numerous publications, such as the one that has been quoted on this slide. Now, what we want to do is we want to include the dominating sources of uncertainty in the system identification. An analysis of the measurements that we obtained from the test rig has shown that especially the position uncertainty has the dominant influence on the estimation accuracy. It depends on random measurement errors of the position sensor of an amplitude of plus minus 0.02 millimeters in the amplitude and additional bounded offset terms in the range of 0.1 millimeters due to variations of ambient light conditions. Altogether, we therefore have a bounded interval uncertainty uh, given as here in this interval, and this interval representation does not contain any information about the probabilistic distribution within the corresponding bounds. Moreover, we have to uh, emphasize at this point that the semi-empirical modeling assumptions from the previous slides are only locally valid. Now, in order to identify the system parameters, especially for the magnetic actuator force, we're considering the system firstly in a steady state. That means we take into account an underlying control loop that allows us to stabilize the sphere at a desired constant position. And by comparison of two different operating points, we're able firstly to resolve this corresponding expression for one of the parameters, the parameter FEMP2, which depends in the numerator on the uncertain position variables of both different experiments, the experiment A and the experiment B, where we have additionally in the denominator, the logarithm of the ratio between the respective average values of the electric currents. Secondly, uh, we perform a backward substitution of this expression, the interval expression, into the steady state equilibrium conditions, and therefore we are able to resolve the corresponding expression also for the missing second parameter, which can then again be expressed in terms of this interval valued right hand side. In such a way, we can perform numerous identification experiments. In our case, we have done five experiments. And over the collection of the numerous identified interval quantities, we have formed a 
corresponding convex interval help to include all interval estimates within some guaranteed interval bounds that capture the information of all identification experiments that had been carried out. Moreover, we have also identified the position-dependent time constant of the electric subsystem in transient operating conditions. Those transient operating conditions contain, firstly, the transitions between different steady state values for the position in a control system operation, and additionally, also an actuation of the system by a sinusoidal reference trajectory, again, for the position variable x1. The corresponding minimization between the deviate uh, of the deviation between the measured and corresponding simulated time responses for the electric current has been carried out by a Nelda Mead simplex method in order to determine the unknown parameters of the time constant characteristic, which depends on the position x1, as it is shown here in this equation. Finally, again, we're forming an interval hull over all point valued estimates in order to obtain a robust model. The result of this identification procedure is therefore an identification of the both position dependent characteristics for the magnetic actuator as well as for the time constant of the underlying current control. Moreover, it should be pointed out that this approach leads to a significant reduction of the computational effort in comparison with classical branch and prune procedures that are well known from the field of global optimization, which could be used as an alternative for the parameter identification scheme. However, our procedure is not fully verified. That means there may exist some observed state trajectories that are not embedded fully within the characteristics as have we, uh, we have identified. But as we can show by the following examples, uh, the corresponding model is yet sufficiently robust. What you can see on this slide is a visualization of both identified characteristics. On the left-hand side, the force characteristic shown here in Newton for fixed electric current for the sake of simplicity and for position variations between 0 and 15 millimeters. On the right-hand side, we have considered the same variation of the position, but the quantity that is depicted here is the time constant variation for the electric current circuit. Now, what you can see is especially that the uncertainty in the position measurement has a large influence, as it is shown here on the left-hand side, where we have performed a comparison of the identification scheme, firstly in yellow, without considering the position uncertainty that has been specified by the interval variable, and with taking into account the corresponding position uncertainty. Now, what we want to do is we want to use this model for propagating, firstly, uncertainty by means of a thick ellipsoid approach from one time step to the next after a temporal discretization of the system. A thick ellipsoid is an object, as it is shown here on the slide, which contains an outer hull of the guaranteed reachable domain in the state space here shown in blue and a corresponding inter inner bound here shown in white. Both outer and inner bounds are assumed to be parallel to each other and include, as it is shown in green, the true set of reachable states. Now, when performing a mapping from one time step to the next, we're searching for a new ellipsoid that on the one hand includes the outer bound with certainty and the inner bound, which contains with absolute certainty, the true set of reachable states. The corresponding thick ellipsoid operators for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, union, and intersection have been derived in this paper that is summarized here on this slide. Moreover, what is necessary for us is to perform mappings from an n to an m-dimensional spa uh, state space where the arguments of this function are represented by ellipsoids, or more specifically by thick ellipsoids, and their outcome as derived in the publication denoted on the previous slide results again in a thick ellipsoid. Now, when we want to perform an ellipsoidal predictor corrector state estimation procedure, we're mostly interested in the outer bound of this propagation of the uncertainty from one time step to the next. Therefore, the algorithm summarized on the slide firstly performs a mapping of the ellipsoid midpoint from one time step to the next. It uses a forecast of the new shape matrix of the ellipsoid after a linearization of the system model at the ellipsoid midpoint, 
And as it is shown on the right hand side, a stretch parameter rho is determined that allows us to inflate the ellipsoid in such a way that all occurring linearization errors are included with certainty in the updated uh, shape matrix of the ellipsoid. Moreover, the correction step is something that we published in previous work. That's a publication together with Auguste Bourgois and Luc Cholin in MDPI algorithms, in which we have shown how to intersect two ellipsoids with different midpoints and subsequently how to perform the computation of an outer ellipsoid bound that contains the intersection with absolute certainty. If we want to perform a comparison of the ellipsoidal estimation procedure with a classical uncentered Kalman filter, we also need to take into account model mismatches. Model mismatches here arise especially due to errors in the force characteristic, and they are included in the stochastic estimator by means of an integrated disturbance model for the disturbance force X4. And additionally, we take into account additive Gaussian process and measurement. Now let's come to a summary of the results. If we just perform an uncertain Kalman filter-based estimation of the system by taking into account position and current measurements, we can see that consistent bounds for both the position and the electric current can be determined by means of this stochastic estimation scheme. However, for the velocity, the estimates are obviously inconsistent, especially due to the fact that the average zero velocity occurring in the system partially even lies out the three sigma bound, as it is shown in the middle of the slide. This problem can be resolved in such a way that we include a disturbance estimate explicitly in the uncentered Kalman filter, as I have explained two slides before. However, this definitely leads to an increase of the state space representation in this dimension, and therefore also complicated uh, the evaluation in real time. However, what we can see on the right hand side, where we have depicted the influence of the estimated disturbance, this estimated disturbance has a significant contribution in form of a model mismatch on the system dynamics. Now, the ellipsoidal approach does not take into account an explicit estimation of the disturbance that we have seen on the previous slide. Instead, it's representing the uncertainty in both the force characteristic and the time constant of the current control loop by the interval parameters that we have derived at the beginning of this talk. In such a way, we obtain on the one hand interval enclosures after projection of the ellipsoid into the X2 direction that definitely contain the true velocity in the computed bounds. In addition, process and measurement noise have been represented in such a way that we're extracting from the covariance ellipsoids used in the uncertain Kalman filter a confidence bound of 95%. Now let's come to a conclusion and an outlook on future work. In this presentation, we have seen, firstly, a robust set-based approach to experimental system identification. This experimental system identification has provided us with the interval bounds for uncertain parameter in the assumed force and time constant characteristics, which depend for the magnetic levitation system, both on the position variable x -way. Moreover, this has been the input for the implementation of an ellipsoidal predictor corrector state estimation procedure with which we can determine bounded uncertainty or handle bounded uncertainty in a straightforward manner. That means without heuristically tuning the process noise covariances. In future work, we will extend this approach to an online identification of system parameter we will further on continue our work on mixed, that means stochastic and set-valued uncertainty representation, and finally include the outcomes in a robust model predictive control strategy. For related publications, please have a look at this list of references. Thanks a lot for your attention.